Hi everyone, it's Bethany. Welcome back to my channel. In this video, we are going to be opening up and creating with Spellbinders March Clear Stamp and Die of the Month. I think this is so cute. I love the fact that for this monthly subscription, each time I am so surprised with what arrives, it has really done so much for my creativity and I've been really enjoying it. As a reminder, I have been participating with Spellbinders this year and each month they are sending me their clear stamp and die of the month and I'm going to create with it. So here is March's little set. I think it's really fun and I can't wait to get inspired with it. So I have pulled some scrap paper. I'll also link all of the things that I am using down in the description box below, as well as the place where you can go ahead and sign up for the subscription or see what other clubs and kits they offer each month. These are really fun. Okay, I think I'm going to go ahead and do some heat embossing. So what I'm going to do first is grab an A2 size panel and this little butterfly cutout. And believe it or not, we're actually going to start off with die cutting and not stamping. Okay, I'm going to bring in my paper trimmer. I have an A2 size panel here and A2 is as a reminder four and a quarter by five and a half. And what I'm going to do is I am simply going to take off a quarter of an inch off each side. That way I just have slightly smaller for my card panel. So that's going to then measure four by five and a quarter. And that is where we are going to begin. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in the die and I'm going to cut out some butterflies and I want to do three. So I think I'll have two kind of coming off the page here and then I'll have maybe a full one down at the bottom. And actually, I want to kind of leave some ample room for a sentiment down here. So what I think I'll do is I will start at the bottom and then maybe do one kind of peeking off the page down here, one here, and then maybe my full one here. Okay, starting with my first cut. And then you can go ahead and keep the little insides that will come off of your little die cuts. You can save those for other projects. Those are so cute. Okay, our second cut. And then our third and final little cutout. Now you're going to want to be really careful because we have some little delicate pieces. In fact, if you want to even opt to do a 110 pound cardstock, that probably would be a very good idea. I went with 80 pounds, but if I were going to start over, I would definitely do 110 pounds. Okay, so here is my panel. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in just some colored cardstock and I am going to start cutting out little strips. I want to see how much space I have inside the butterfly. They look to be about two inches, but I'm gonna double check with the actual die. It looks about two inches. So I'm going to do about a half inch, I think a half inch per, maybe a little bit more than a half inch. I'm gonna do three strips per butterfly and I'm just gonna go ahead and trim those out with my little mini trimmer and then we will start the next step. Okay, now that I have all of my little strips, what I will do next is I am just going to attach them to a, another card panel. And it doesn't actually matter what size, but I just want a scrap piece of paper to get these all lined up. Okay, and I'm simply going to use just tape runner to secure my little strips. Okay, so I have my little strips here. And what I wanted to do was I'm going to do this color combination for the first butterfly. And then I want to pull the last color from the first combination and bring it into the second. And then I'll do the same thing for the third by pulling my last color from my second and bringing it into the third butterfly. So right now all we're doing is just making sure we have our strips really laid down nicely on cardstock. And then I 
think I'm going to do some heat embossing on these strips. And I think this will turn out really fun. Okay, I really like these little color blocks. I think they're looking really fun. Okay, so essentially our first little butterfly will look like this. Our second butterfly will look something like that. And then our third butterfly will look like that. I think that'll be really cute. Okay, so now what I'm thinking of doing is I need to trim these down further. And I'll just bring my paper trimmer in and I can always keep the scraps that come off, but I just need a little bit that will kind of peekaboo through my butterfly. So I'm thinking I can just trim and making sure I have enough room. That should be plenty. Okay, so I'm gonna trim right here. And then I'll go ahead and just trim these apart. It doesn't have to be perfect. In fact, I can keep that little white on there. It doesn't have to be perfect, but I just want those to be all ready to go. Okay, I actually redid a little strip because I wasn't really digging this color combo, but I do like this better. Okay, so now what I'm going to do, yes, I do like that. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring out my Misty and we are going to now incorporate the stamps and we're gonna heat emboss on these little strips. And I wanna bring out my larger Misty so I have plenty of room to work with. Let's go this way. And let's just go from top to bottom. So what I want to do is I want my stripes to be um, at a right angle. So I'm going to place my paper with my template in here. I'm going to put my magnet down and those look good to me. I think those stripes look really nice. I'm going to double check. Okay. Yeah, those look good. Okay. Now I'm going to prep my paper with some anti, well, let's put, the, actually, let's put the stamp down first. Let's put the stamp down first. Okay, so I think, you know, both of them are really pretty. They have very subtle differences. Some of the flowers are just different. I kind of like this. So I'm gonna take that stamp, pull it out, and I'm just gonna place it within my opening here. Okay, and that looks good, so what I'll do just grab that and then I'll prep my paper with the anti-static. There we go. And grab our Versamark. Okay, grabbing Versamark, inking up my stamp, and let me grab my little pressure tool. I want to get a good impression here. this up okay oh that looks really cool oh that looks really neat I don't think I want to re-stamp because I don't want to uh, mess it up so I think I'm going to stamp that once and hopefully that was good enough so I'm going to bring this out and I think I was thinking of doing white, but I think it would be really fun to do a clear embossing powder on this. Okay, so I've seen Carissa Wiley put clear embossing powder on covered car or colored cardstock, and it was so neat. So I really want to give it a try because I haven't done much with clear embossing powder. And I like the idea of it being just a nice, subtle look. We have some, you know, vibrancy of the paper, but then just pairing it with a nice soft look would be really neat. Okay, I think we're about good. I'm gonna brush off a couple spots. Actually, no, I'm not. That looks that looks pretty good. So I'm going to just funnel this back in, and I'm using the Simon Says Stamp Fine Detail Clear, and let me heat up my heat tool. Okay. 
Okay, so you want to be careful because I wonder if it's kind of trying to melt the tape runner underneath. So I'm hoping that it stays intact. I think it will, especially once we put this whole card together. But how neat is that? Isn't that pretty? And then you have that nice glossy shine. I like how it's so subtle, but it's there. It's so neat. Okay, so I'm going to set that to the side. And again, with the heat, we're going to go really fast and just do it as quick as we can so we don't kind of melt there, the tape runner that's underneath. Okay, and then I'm just going to put a little block on that while I continue on. That way it flattens out and kind of retacks down with our tape runner. Okay, so my next one is going to be this color combination. And it will be here. So I think that looks good in terms of how the stripes are going. I think that is just a tad better. So I'm going to just place my magnet down there. Hopefully that holds it. Now I'm going to wipe off my stamp because I don't want to transfer any Versamark over to my next butterfly while I'm trying to position it. Okay, so let's just make sure that's nice and clean. There we go. And also make sure it's dry. Okay, now I'm just going to position my stamp within the next little opening. Okay, and I think that looks good. Press that down. And being gentle here, we have just a delicate little spot hanging on. If I were to do that again, I would probably just move it over. Well, I don't know, I really like the placement. So just being careful. And, and when we construct this in the end, we're gonna put some foam tape there, so. Hopefully it's all fine. Okay, back with my Versamark to ink that up. Whoa, it's getting very jumpy. Okay, and place that down. Okay, grabbing my pressure tool. Okay, oh, being careful. And that looks good. So I'm gonna do the exact same thing. I'm going to add my clear embossing powder, heat it up real quick, and then I'll move on to the final little trio of colors. Okay, this one turned out really pretty as well. Love that. Okay, I'm gonna let that one sit and I'll finish up with my final one. The grid lines on the back of the Misty are really, really helping me with this particular project because I'm able to make sure that they are running, you know, perfectly parallel so that I can match up and get really good right angles. So, I think that looks really good to my eye. Yes. Place my magnet down. We've got to talk about for just a moment how well I have been doing with not forgetting my anti-static powder because that was one of my biggest struggles when I first started card making. I was always forgetting it. And I was always saying that, you know, whenever you make mistakes when crafting and card building that is when you learn the most and for every time that I forgot my Versamark man that really helped me <laughs> learn to always always grab for it now watch in the next video I'll totally forget to use it but for now I'm very proud of myself okay there's the last one I think this one's gonna be super super vibrant The final little butterfly. How fun are these? Okay, now I feel like it's getting really exciting because now we have all of our little elements and now we start to build. Before I start to build my card, I think it's time to do the sentiment while it's still nice and flat. So I'm going to 
grab the stamps and let's get inspired with what we would like to do. I kind of like just a little high from me. That is a darling. We also have you are so kind. The best is yet to come. Have the best birthday. Hmm. I do need a birthday card, but I really am just loving this just a little high from me. It's just, it's, I don't know. I instantly loved it. So I'm going to stamp that right on the panel. So let me grab my Misty once more. And I want to do a practice because it's a brand new stamp. And this panel at this point is golden. We have all of our measurements and our, it's just our whole guide. So I don't want to mess it up at the last second. So I'm just going to grab this little piece here and practice. But before I do so, let me at least bring this in and position where I would like here. Okay. I like that. I really wanted a little bottom right justified sentiment. I think that looks good. Okay. So, oh, <laughs> goodness gracious. Okay. Are you even a card maker if you haven't done that? Got the perfect placement and then nudged it. Okay, I think that's good. Let's cling it before it snags again. Okay, so I'm just going to bring this down and let's see here. Do a little practice. That looks great. I'll use my Memento Tuxedo Black. Let me just try to prime it a little bit, although I don't want to rub because I don't, it's such a small and delicate stamp that I don't want to, you know, misalign it. So I'm just going to practice. Oh, that's so pretty. The font is just gorgeous. I love that. Okay. So pretty. Okay. Let's cross our fingers that it's the same here. And get this tucked in just like we'd like it. Stamp this up. And press down. Okay, sorry, I got a little quiet there. That was major focus. Okay, I am, no, I'm not gonna, <laughs> I'm not going to restamp it. It looks, it looks good. Usually I like to double just to really get some contrast, but if that happened to just move a little bit, um, I just don't want, I don't want to chance it. So it looks good. I'm going to take the win. So now oh, that's so cute. We're going to start building up our little card. Now I'm going to take just a paper towel and just really rub over and take off any of that anti-static powder that could just be still lingering on the paper. Okay. There we go. That looks great. And you know what? My tape runner is fine. So I was nervous about that, but I think letting it set afterwards really helped. Okay. So I'm trying to decide if I want to do some foam tape so that it's kind of hovering over or if I want it to go flat down on the on the back side. I think I want a little bit of foam tape. I think that'll be pretty. Okay, so I'm going to turn this over and I'm going to find some really skinny foam tape because I don't need a lot. I have this from Waffle Flower. And I don't need a lot of dimension. I just need, um, and they have a variety of sizes. I think this will work. I think this will work really nice. Okay, I'm going to just start, grab my anti 
sticky scissors. <laughs> Did I even say that right? Non-stick scissors. That's better. Okay. And I'm just going to start placing foam tape all around and being mindful of little areas that I want to build up, like this little area here that could be delicate. So I'll just start going through and building all these little pieces up. All right, there we are at, folks. That is the hot mess that is the back, but I think it'll be worth it <laughs> now. Okay, now what we need to do is position over here. Now, I'm thinking, or was I thinking? I think what I need to do is only remove the little backs from just the area that I'm working with so that I don't have so much sticky on the back. Does that make sense? So what I'm gonna do first is I'm going to tape down my butterfly on my mat. That way it stays in position while I am, oops, that's gonna be too much, um, while I am getting this all placed. Okay, so that is placed down. And now I'm going to go through and just remove all these little backers from the area where my first butterfly is. Okay, so I have all of those exposed. Now, when I'm doing a tedious little task such as that one, it gives me time to think. And what I was thinking is I need to trim this down just a little bit because I don't need all of this space and I don't want it overlapping and I don't want to have to trim it down once it is positioned behind the card. So I'm going to go ahead and remove my pink tape and I'm going to run this through my little paper cutter really quickly and just trim as far down as I can and as close as I can. So I will trim like this. And I'll just go all the way around and trim all those sides. Okay, I think that is good. Less is going to be helpful here. Okay, taking all my scraps away. And then, you know what I'll do so that I don't have any tape interfering is I'm gonna double my tape and just tape it to my mat this way. I know this is a very fussy card, but you know, I'm having fun. I'm gonna bring it down just a little bit so it's closer to me. So I think we'll be okay. So now I think I'll add, that was the right choice. I think I will add some liquid glue to the back side of my foam tape just so that it doesn't stick instantly but gives me a little bit of uh, time to hover and shift into position. So, and it might get glue on my mat, but praise the glass mat because I can just wipe it off. So I'm not worried one bit. Okay, so now I'm just gonna position over and there is the first butterfly down. Very neat, so I'm gonna pull this up. <laughs> Being mindful that my butterfly is attached to my mat there. Very nice. Okay, so a little bit of glue. I'm just gonna wipe that away, not too bad. And I can take this tape off and we'll just let that set for a moment. Now, I'm gonna do my second one. I'm gonna go run these through the paper trimmer really quickly so these are both prepped and ready to go. Okay, double stick tape for my next butterfly that here okay and that is going to go here so I will remove the foam tape in that area okay I added my liquid glue on top of my foam tape and now I can position okay I think that looks good so I'm going to just Make sure that that is placed down and that piece is now attached so I feel so much better about that and try not to 
glue my panel to my mat. Okay. And we'll do the third and final butterfly. And our final butterfly. Okay. There we go. Peel this last one up. And now we will start focusing on trimming our corners. Isn't that neat? I'm loving this. Okay, so I'm going to attempt putting this through my paper trimmer to see if I can just trim off those little, little ends. Okay, so there's one side and that looks really, really good. I'm gonna go ahead and do the second side. Okay. There we go. That looks so fun. I love this. Okay, let's get this little cutie patootie on a card base and I'm keeping it face down even though I want to just sit and stare at it because it's so pretty but I don't want it to stick on my mat. So what I'm going to do is I have 110 pound cardstock and it's sized at 11 by four and a quarter. Half of 11 gives us five and a half. So that is where we will place our center score line and that will give us our top folding A2 size card. So I will just fold, bring in my bone folder really crease that edge. Now, before I build up the card, I have to show you, I ordered a stamp for myself for the back of my cards. And I was telling you at the beginning of the year that I really, really wanted to have a personalized stamp for the back side. Well, I ordered one finally. And you know, it's been about a year since I've started, no, not a year since I've started card making, but a year since I've kind of fell down the rabbit hole of card making. And that kind of, it was kind of a year ago when I started thinking this could be a really fun hobby. So it's kind of nice that, I don't know, I want to give myself some time to make sure that this was something that wasn't just a phase. And let me tell you, this isn't a phase, this is a lifestyle. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my little stamp right on the back side of my card. Now I need to do a little test stamp because this is brand new. I have not used it yet, so I'm gonna go ahead and grab my little test strip once more. And Oh, goodness gracious. How cute is that? Oh, it's exactly what I wanted. Okay, I'll link the shop where I purchased mine in case you would like to as well. Oops, I don't need to take this away. Let's go ahead and stamp this down. Okay, so back side of my card. It's going the right direction. Okay. get this centered and straight. This might take a little practice. Ah, I love it. So fun. Okay, so now actually I'll do this because we're going to work on the front side. Now, we still have, we have the foam tape, we have the dimension there, so I'm not gonna add any more of that, but what I am going to add is some glue. So I'm just gonna add glue all over my panel. And well, actually, I'm just gonna add glue to these paper pieces. And then obviously we have the sticky, stickiness of the foam tape that will adhere. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna add a little bit to some of these two. All right, now turn this over and position. Now again, at the very beginning, if we can remember the beginning of this video, we trimmed this down so that there was a quarter of an inch off each side. That way we have a really nice border here. Oh my gosh, that looks so good. 
I love it. Now I am going to grab my adhesive eraser. I have a couple little spots for my pink tape and I'm going to just go very gently. It doesn't take much, but if you don't have an adhesive eraser, it is one of the best things you can have in your craft room. Okay. Oh goodness gracious. Okay, I'm gonna bring in a little sequins, not promising that I'm going to put any on, but I have to just see if I would like that option. So let me also bring in my little tray. Okay, here we go. I think this could, could have the potential of being really pretty, but we will see. Okay, I'm not digging the sequins, but I might be enjoying these little dew drops that I have. They're one of my favorite little items in my craft space in terms of embellishments. And I actually think that that is really fun. Okay, let me go ahead and position some around and I'll have my little indecisive moment and then we'll glue down. Okay, I adore that. I think that is a really nice subtle final touch it's not too noisy it just adds something and I really like that okay adding my glue and when you add the glue it makes these look just a tad foggy for a little bit and then they'll dry nice and clear so pretty kind of reminds me um, you know, of those little rain dew drops on leaves after it rains. So kind of going with the little nature theme. I have to be completely transparent. Butterflies are not my jam. Like I just, I, I just, I don't know. They're just not my jam. But this is the cutest butterfly inspired or actual, not inspired, butterfly card or item I've ever seen. And I'm not, I'm just not a butterfly girl. I don't know why. So I was a little nervous when butterflies were the theme. But again, the thing that I'm loving about this monthly subscription is that it really, pardon the noise, it really, it has you step out of your comfort zones, right? It, it creatively like just makes you think differently and um, work with things that maybe you wouldn't initially pick. And let me tell you, butterflies aren't something that I would initially pick, but this is probably one, and I say it all the time, I should probably make a t-shirt. This is probably one of my favorite cards I've made this year. I love it. I think this is so fun. And the colors and I don't know, the, the whole thing just makes, makes me think that this probably wouldn't work with anything but butterflies, right? I mean, the butterflies added the perfect shape and opportunity to bring a technique like this to card making. I think this is just so fun. I'm really loving the clear embossing powder and that look. Oh my gosh, that's just so fun. I love it. I love this so much. Well, I hope you enjoyed watching this and seeing this beautiful card come together. I am tickled pink. I think this was so fun. I'm really glad that I changed up the color combination on the second little butterfly. I think that is really, really sweet and darling. But I hope you enjoyed this. Please be sure to check out the description box below if you wanna take a closer look at any of the supplies and materials that I used to bring this card together. And as always, I'll also place a link to Spellbinders clear stamp and die kit of the month in case you'd like to sign up as well. And again, they have other little subscriptions in case you want to choose something a little bit different. They have things like embossing folders and hot foil plates. They are, have a whole list on their site, so I'll just let you browse around, but the links will all be down there and I cannot wait to continue creating with you in the next video. Please be sure to give this a thumbs up if you enjoyed watching and I can't wait to continue creating with you soon.